If you pray this kind of prayer, you will feel God's response on every part you make available to God. You will feel it on your spirit, you will feel it on your physical body, and you will feel it in your soul. How do you allow yourself to be overtaken by the spirit of prayer? Because for many of us in this room, you have never experienced that intercourse with God where God sweeps you off and you are no longer in charge. And then he, he releases you from detention three hours later. Many of us here have never experienced that. Not because you are not powerful enough. I've heard of your stories. But the problem is, you don't know how to give yourself to the spirit of prayer. Are you here? Prayer contains the total man. I had to go reading the hymns of the 18th century. Because in the hymns of the 18th century, I found testimonies in some of the hymnals that revealed great lives of devotion in the saints that wrote these hymns. So I got one. This is what the saint wrote in his hymn. He said, it is not enough to bend the knee and the words of prayer say, the heart must with the lips agree or else we do not pray. There must be that point where your heart and your mouth meet in agreement because it is possible for your heart to be saying something and your mouth to be saying something else. You see, this creature we call man is a complex entity has diverse parts that may seek to re resonate on different frequencies. But being able to collocate the parts of this entity called man and to submit such parts to the spirit of prayer so that it can work out the protocol of bringing you before the presence of God. If you pray this kind of prayer, you will feel God's response on every part you make available to God. You will feel it on your spirit, you will feel it on your physical body, and you will feel it in your soul. How do you give yourself? The way to give yourself to prayer is to make what is on God's heart your goal. The moment your motivation for prayer is something that is self-centered, the river of prayer is not likely to overflow you. The moment what brought you to the prayer room is not in direct sync with what is on the heart of God, you have lost the opportunity to be overwhelmed by the spirit of prayer. I know that there are legitimate needs in your life and you want to talk to God about those needs. There's nothing wrong with that. But the reason why you are an intercessor is not to pray your prayers, but to pray God's prayers. So there's, there's a time for you to pray your prayers. But the reason why you pray every day is not to pray your prayer. The reason why you pray every day must be to pray God's prayer. And when, you, when your desire in your prayer adventure is to know what is on the heart of God, then the protocol of spiritual intercourse begins because God begins to share his heart with you and for every strand of disclosure that God makes he sucks you into he, himself until there is no loose end left 
you might find yourself crying and your, your prayers are not in words that an onlooker can pick and know what you are praying about. That's the kind of prayer that Anna was praying and even the priest himself could not adequately judge the spiritual transaction that was taking place because it was intercourse. She felt it in her spirit. She felt it in her soul. And she mirrored it in her body. She forgot herself. And the man looked at the woman and took her for drunk. Are you still with me? So if I wake up in the morning, the reason why I woke up that morning is not because I'm smart. I woke up in the morning because God decided to show me mercy. So my day must begin with finding out why am I here? Why am I here today? Why did I survive? Many of us trivialize waking up. But the reason why you woke up is not because of any business you are doing or the job you want to seek. God gave you breath because he is hopeful that he will find pleasure from your life that day. He is hopeful that he will be pleased through your life that day. So this is what we do. We don't care about what God wants, what is troubling God. We just show up and say, you know what? I have a job interview. Can you make power available? Manipulate all the people on the panel. Make them accept me. And when you do that, close, you can go on vacation. It's too self-centered to attract the attention and come. Meanwhile, in your world, what you are asking for is legitimate. Yes, keep that one aside first. Find out, why am I here? He may shock you that morning with a disclosure that will make you lose utterance to even present the matter you brought. And while you get consumed in his matter, he will attend to your own matter. The average believer is not concerned about what bothers God. He's not concerned about why God made him wake up from his sleep. The average minister of the gospel is not concerned about what God is doing. He already has his outline of what he wants to achieve. Such a minister will never collide with the glory of God. Meanwhile, God will not kill him. God will be giving him a little grace so that he can get by. Because at, at the end of the day, the gospel is preached. But God does not expect any big thing to come out of his life. Because he doesn't know God's heart. A skillful prayer person that knows that his life depends on prayer begins by attempting to know why. Why did I wake up today? These days when I pray to go preach for meetings, I have realized that God may not be sending me to the whole congregation. He's sending me to one individual in the congregation. And I want to know how to identify that individual. When I started thinking that way, he gives me signs on how to locate that one. 10,000 people. Before I finish, I will find, that. I will find the person. When I... Are you there? Meanwhile, the preacher that preaches... A good message and everybody is charged up. He's trying. The one that knows what God wants to do. He's not trying. It is God that is using him. He's not working for God. God is using him. He's working with God. Because he, he labored to find out what God wanted to do. And then he made himself available to be a vessel. So God was under obligation to reveal to him what he will not reveal to someone that doesn't care 
about what God wants to do. So the way that man operates, you will see that God is the one walking through him. He's not just anointed. No. What he's doing is not his thing. What he's doing is what God is doing. He's walking with God. The economy of grace that will be on that man's life will be different from the economy of grace that is on the life of someone that just wants to have a good meeting, a good service. He wants to have a message so that it will not be said that on Sunday morning there was nothing to pray. Your first point of call in giving yourself in your prayer processes is desiring to know what is on the heart of God. Do you know that when you begin to ask God, what is troubling you? He will not believe that you are serious for a long time. He will not respond. And you keep asking him, that's why I came. I don't have any other prayer point. It's just to find out about you. How are you doing? Are you okay? Is there any problem? Then he will take you to a place, a secret place. A place where normal people are not found. Then he will show you one thing. That thing he will show you will glue on your heart. It will become a body. It is standing on your heart by spiritual power, by spiritual means. When God, in response to the fact that you want to know what is upon his heart, puts a burden upon you, that burden becomes the license that affords God the opportunity to draw you and to suck you into his realm anytime you stand before him. With your intention to know God, it's not enough to know God. No one can know God if God doesn't want you to know him. No. But when God sees that there's a genuine hunger on your heart, not for the things of man, but the th things of God, then he will bring you to where he reveals the things of God. It's a chamber in his spirit. Are you there? Or you are not there? Just one burden on your heart can take you for 25 years will be enough reason for you to pray in a way that normal people don't pray. Because with the body, it's a commensurate supply of spiritual energy to keep you steadfast in prosecuting that need that is upon the heart of God and giving God the opportunity to begin to fulfill it. So I've decided not to stay in the outer court. So for many years, I was asking God, what is on your heart? What is troubling you now? That was when the Lord told me that falsehood will reach a peak in your lifetime. And because you have asked me, I will recruit you to be one of the foot soldiers I will use against the spirit of deception. Are you there? From the day the Lord said that to me, he removed me from the general pool of ministers and brought me to a place where he shows me the deception that Satan is about to hash. And when you see how vicious it is and how many people it will influence, nobody will ask you to pray. The burden will become your invitation into that place where prayers are made. Are you there? If you have not entered into this exclusive group, your prayer life and your Christian life will look like the average Christian life in your generation. The moment you come into this exclusive group, you will be like a standalone entity. Your body is different. Your style is different. Your emphasis is different. Even though people may not like you, you even receive energy from their hatred. Because what is driving you is not on social media.
If God raises you as a warrior, he gives, he, he, he equips you with an armor. An armor that is effective in the kind of fight he has called you to fight. Are you with me? So find what is on the heart of God. That's the entry point into receiving a body. And it is a body that makes you give yourself. So when you see a believer praying without a body, he's very conscious of himself. His mind is in his pocket. He's counting all the money in the pocket. Meanwhile, he's praying in tongues. And he prays for long. But his mind is not in what he's doing. He doesn't have a body. He's been, he, he's around prayer people. So he has learned how to pray. So he knows how to pray. So he can pray for some time. He has found that grace so he can sustain the prayer. But he does most of what he does absent-minded because he doesn't have a body. His lack of a body is suggestive of the fact that he has not entered into the exclusive group because he has not sought to find out what is on the heart. That's number one. Number two. Let me do one scripture in the book of Luke chapter 22. Luke 22 verse 40 to 44. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray. That he entered not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled, kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me, nevertheless. Not my will, but thine be done. Yes? And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. I'm just showing you some of the structures God puts in place. Sometimes the strength of your own recreated human spirit is not strong enough for you to go the length where you can get help. The guy has the right body. He has the right prayer point. The will of God is in front of his adventure, but he doesn't have the capacity to arrive at a place where he will be considered serious. And God himself now arranges a generator to boost his capacity. If, if there was an alternative to prayer, we would have seen it here. You are traveling from Makodi to Abuja and your fuel finishes in Lafia. Go to a filling station. So this filling station method, the spiritual energy was not sufficient. So God had to create. Are you there? I don't know how many of you have experienced this angelic strength in prayer. If you ever experience this, your sense of time will be lost. It's like detention. You are detained. You will not be conscious of time. That's what I'm saying. If you are conscious of time, no, it's your strength, the one in your spirit. If this happens to you, you will lose all sense of time. It's like detention. It's only when that angel leaves you that you will recover yourself from the process. It means that God wants to do it and he wants to do it through your spirit man so he sends help to boost your spirit capacity so that you can arrive at the terminus. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly 
can you see that there is the, the turbo charger? The moment the angel came and began to strengthen him, there was a turbo charger effect. He prayed more earnestly and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling to the ground. I know most of us have tried to arrive at this point. You, you can't... <laughs> This reality is a turbocharged reality that is occasioned by external help to boost the output of your spirit in the journeys of prayer. Can you take a snapshot of that? Because this is the snapshot I would like you to go home with. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling to the ground can you see that every aspect of him was in his prayer prayer requires the total man please help me preach to your neighbor prayer requires the total man I have experienced this before. I came from work in Kano. I normally go to the mountain to pray. So I was late. Removed my tie, dropped my bag to run to the mountain. Then I was obstructed by an angel. I was in that detention. I came back by 4 p.m. I was in that detention to 3 a.m. in the morning. It was not my human spirit that was at work. That was where I passed into the context of my calling, the context of my ordination, the context of the anointing that has the errand from heaven to fulfill, to give me the capacity to fulfill what God has called me to do. Is, is possible for you to have a calling and never walk in the anointing that empowers you to fulfill that calling. 3 a.m. in the morning, I was, I was released from the detention. I came the next day again to go to the mountain top and I was accosted by those angels. Four of them. When they left, my physical body was not tired. So I was not using my physical strength. It was spiritual strength. And I was standing before God. Sometimes I stand before him like that in eight, for eight hours. I'm not talking about praying. I'm saying standing before God. 